What's up everyone? It's J-Man and today I'm going to talk to you about the Boston Celtics and I'm going to tell you how I think they're going to do and what they're going to look like this season. As you probably know, there is tremendous hype behind the Celtics right now and I'm going to break down everything you need to know about the team for this coming season. So let's get right into it and take a look at the depth chart. Let me start off by saying this. The Celtics starting lineup is set in stone. I don't know why, but I always see people on Twitter talking about who's going to come off the bench out of Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, and Jason Tatum. None of them. A lot of people don't remember, in Game 1 last year, this was the starting lineup. And after Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum both breaking out last year, it's going to be the same lineup. And the top people off the bench, Marcus Smart as usual, Terry Rozier, Marcus Morris, and Baines. Rozier is going to be a really interesting player to follow this season. He really broke out in the playoffs, but Kyrie's back, so I really don't know what his role exactly is going to be. And he's also in a contract year, so he's definitely going to be an interesting player. And then Baines last year, although he wasn't brought on to be a starter, he was the starting center for most of the year. And he did a really great job protecting the paint. So I think even with the Celtics embracing small ball this season, Stevens will definitely still get Baines minutes. And then after Baines, there's Daniel Tice, who had a very underrated season last season before he got hurt. But the only issue is the Celtics aren't going to want to play Tice and Baines together a lot. So Tice's minutes are going to be very limited. And then after Tice is semi Ojale. Tyson and Ojale are really interchangeable. They both should be getting minutes, but it's going to be really hard for them knowing who's in front of them. I really hope Ojale gets some minutes though, because with all the playmakers and shooters that the Celtics have now, Ojale is one of those few people that is a great defender and a decent three-point shooter. And he doesn't require the ball in his hands. So he's really a great fit with any lineup that the Celtics are going to throw out there, because he can shoot and he can defend really any position. And then after that, Yabusele, Wanamaker, and Williams all aren't going to get many minutes. There's not really an order to them either. I put Williams third because he's really in the same position as Baines and Tice, and they're both going to get minutes, so Williams is going to be buried on the depth chart in his rookie season. And then Jabari Bird, I don't know what the hell is going on with him right now. So I just left him on there at the bottom for now. If he is with the team, then he might switch with Wanamaker. I don't know. We'll see how training camp goes. And yeah, the bench is not my position. That's just an order of who I think is going to be in the game first. So now, let's take a look at some of the team stats from last season. Let's first look at the offensive and defensive rating. Offensive rating, they were 18th in the league. And defensive rating, they were first place in the league. So first off, I think the offensive rating is going to skyrocket this season. So first, the most obvious factor is they're getting Gordon Hayward back. He is going to be so big for this offense because one, now the Celtics have a secondary ball handler, and two, they have another elite scorer next to Kyrie. And they might not just be adding one elite scorer this season, but two in Jason Tatum as well. The way that Jason Tatum played in the playoffs was not how he was in the regular season, especially early on. For the most part, in the regular season, Jason Tatum was pretty timid and only averaged about 10 shots a game. But when the playoffs came around, I think we really started to see Jason Tatum's potential as a scorer. There are some other factors that I'm going to talk about from the stats over there, but for now just know that the Celtics are going to have one of the most high-powered offenses in the league with Kyrie, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum, and Al Horford running the show. I'm going to go ahead and just predict that they're going to be top five in the league. Maybe even top three, honestly. There are not many offenses this year that have the firepower that the Celtics do. So now moving on to defensive rating. Yes, they were first in the league. But I still think their defense is going to improve. Getting Hayward back is going to be huge for two reasons. One, Hayward himself is individually a good defender. That gives the Celtics one more great defender that they can throw at the good players on the other team and rotate with Brown and Tatum so that none of them get tired. The second thing this does for the Celtics defense is it makes them so much more switchable. It's going to be an absolute nightmare running pick and rolls against this team. They're not going to have to waste any energy getting through on-ball or off-ball screens. They're just going to switch everything this year. And that is just going to make their defense that much more deadly. And don't forget who the Celtics have on the bench. All of their top six bench players players are also great defenders. Smart is known as one of the best hustlers and defenders in the entire league. Rozier is an underrated and ridiculous defender. Marcus Morris is one of the toughest players in the league and is known as one of the best defenders on LeBron. Bates had a breakout defensive season last season. And Tice is a high energy, switchable, good rim protector. And then Semi-Ojale might have the most defensive potential out of anybody on this team. 
in just his rookie season in the playoffs, he showed that he could hang with Giannis. So I think it's safe to say the Celtics are going to have one of the best, probably the best, defense in the league next season. So now putting the offense and defensive rating together, we get net rating. They were six last season, and that obviously is going to go up if they have the number one defense and a top five offense. The only other team in the league that is definitely going to have a top five offense and defense is the Warriors. So I'm going to predict that the Celtics are going to have the second best net rating in the league. So now we're going to talk about pace. There are two reasons their pace is going to skyrocket this season. Number one is going to be their improved players on offense. Last season, especially at the very beginning of the season, the offense was very slow sometimes. That's to be expected with so many young players playing and with their second best offensive player going down in the first game. So a lot of the Celtics offense, especially in the first half of the season, was Kyrie ISO bailouts, which brought their pace down a lot. So a better ball movement and quicker shots is going to make that go up a lot. The second thing, replacing Baines with Hayward in the starting lineup is going to be ridiculous for their fast breaks. I am so excited to see this starting lineup get out and running on the fast break. Every single player in the starting lineup can lead the break themselves. And once they're out and running, it's definitely going to be tough stopping Hayward, Tatum, and especially Jalen Brown on the break. Replacing Baines with Hayward made this team a lot faster. And with the depth that the Celtics have, they are going to be running the ball all season. So I'm not going to be too crazy on this one and go ahead and say that their pace is going to be top 10 next season. So the first reasoning I gave for the pace going up is going to be the same reasoning I give you for the field goal percentage going up. High percentage shots do not come from ISO, and the Celtics were running a lot of ISO last season due to their circumstances. That's a big reason that their field goal percentage was 21st in the league. I think that's definitely going to go up, but another factor is going to be keeping it down a little bit, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I think they'll be in the top half in the league for field goal percentage, but I think it's going to be held down by a good factor. And that is three-point field goal attempts. Threes are lower percentage shots, but they count for a point more. So yes, it lowers your field goal percentage, but it increases your effective field goal percentage. So the Celtics were 10th in the league in three-point attempts last season with 30 per game. And again, with Hayward in the starting lineup and Baines taken out, oh boy. Every single player in the starting lineup can now shoot threes. The lowest three-point field goal percentage out of the starters last season was Jalen Brown with 39.3% last season. The floor is going to be so spread and they're going to shoot so many threes next season. It's going to be an absolute nightmare for defenses and they're going to be top five in three-point attempts next season. So moving on to free throw attempts. So last season, the Celtics really had nobody but Kyrie who could get to the line. That's understandable having two wings that are in their first year starting and then Horford and Baines aren't the type of players that are going to get to the line a lot. And Kyrie only averaged 4.4 attempts per game. But with Hayward coming in, he's great at getting to the line. Hayward averaged about 6 free throw attempts per game in each of his last three seasons in Utah. So that's going to help him out a lot. And then also the offensive emergence of Tatum in the playoffs last season is going to help them out a lot in that area as well. During the regular season last year, Tatum averaged 3.2 free throw attempts per game. And in the playoffs, we bumped that up to 5.1. So the Celtics are definitely going to be getting to the line a lot more next season. I also think that the team is going to be shooting more threes though. And when you shoot a lot of threes, you don't get to the line a lot. So while I think there will be improvement, I don't think there will be a lot of improvement there. So moving on to assists. Assists has the same reasoning as pace and field goal percentage. The more iso ball you play, the less your assist numbers are. And under the circumstances last season, they had to play a lot of iso ball. But with a starting lineup of five players that can all move the ball and shoot threes, the assist numbers are going to skyrocket. And a lot of these extra threes that are going to be taken are going to be assisted. So I think that number is going to go up a lot this season. I can't imagine with this Celtics starting lineup that they will not be top 10 in assists next season. Moving on to turnovers. Again, Hayward is going to have a huge impact here. Last season, Kyrie was really the only ball handler in the starting lineup. They didn't really have any secondary ball handlers or secondary playmakers besides Al Horford. So having Hayward in that lineup as a secondary ball handler for Kyrie is going to be huge. And it's going to take a lot of pressure off of Kyrie and the turnovers are going to go down in return. However, I think they're going to be a fast-paced team this season, so I don't think it's going to go down by much because the faster you play, the more mistakes you have, but they will still be improved. Moving on to points, 
I already talked about this. I think the Celtics will have one of the most high-powered offenses in the league, and they will definitely be top five in scoring. And then lastly, rebounding. With Baines being taken out of the starting lineup, their rebounding numbers are probably going to go down a little bit. But versatility is also huge for rebounding numbers, so I don't think it's going to go down by much. And also, with the Celtics taking more threes, they're probably going to get more offensive rebounds. So I don't think it's going to go down by that much. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about individual player expectations for next season. First, I'm going to talk about Kyrie and Hayward. These two players are perfect for each other. They're going to make each other's lives so much easier. Kyrie had a difficult time last season with no secondary ball handler, and Hayward and Utah had a hard time with no primary ball handler. So these two are going to take so much pressure off of each other, and they're going to love it. Al Horford is starting to get a little older, so I think we're going to start to see a little bit of decline in his athleticism. So I don't think he's going to be as aggressive as a scorer, but oh my gosh, he's going to have so much fun as a playmaker with this group. Horford is a playmaker first, and I think at this point in his career, he's going to start turning into even more of a playmaker. He's an incredibly smart basketball player, and he fits in perfectly with this group. Jason Tatum, as you know, turned into an absolute beast in the playoffs. Obviously, I think he's going to calm down a little bit in the regular season now that Kyrie's back and Gordon Hayward's back. But with their increased pace, I definitely think there's going to be enough shots to go around for Tatum to have a little bit of a breakout on offense. Jalen Brown. Everybody has forgotten about Jalen Brown because Jason Tatum is breaking out. Jalen Brown had a breakout season last season too and also was a beast in the playoffs. He's turned into a great three-point shooter and I think he's going to get a lot of open looks with Kyrie, Gordon Hayward, and Jason Tatum getting a lot of attention. And also, I'm expecting huge things from him on defense. He was a beast last year on that end of the floor, and he takes a lot of pride in that. So I would not be surprised if he makes an all-NBA defensive team next season. So then moving on to the bench, Marcus Smart is just going to be Marcus Smart. He doesn't care about shots. He doesn't care about anything except for winning. So I think he clearly is going to fit perfectly with this team. His only issue is his health. Hopefully he can stay healthy for the whole season, but the Celtics are so deep, if he does get hurt, he's going to have plenty of time to ease back into the lineup. Terry Rozier is going to be one of the more interesting players on this team this season. After having a breakout in the playoffs as a starter, it's going to be interesting to see what his role is going to be this season. I still think he'll get a lot of minutes, but his role exactly is going to be interesting. Marcus Morris is the player that I am most worried about. The great thing about this team is everybody is very unselfish. And pretty much everybody is great three-point shooters, so there's going to be a lot of ball movement and a lot of easy shots. Marcus Morris, however, tends to shoot a lot of contested twos. If anybody is going to be traded during the season on this team, I think it's going to be Marcus Morris. He still is a great defender and is great at guarding LeBron, but LeBron is out of the East now, so Marcus Morris is less important. Also, I forgot to mention before, Terry Rozier is in his contract year. If the Celtics re-sign Kyrie, it's going to be tough to keep Rozier as well. That being said, I do not think that the Celtics are going to trade Rozier. Moving on to Baines. When Baines gets his minutes, he's going to have a very similar role to last season. And also in the playoffs, Baines started to flash a three-point stroke. And on defense, he's going to pick up right where he left off last season. Tice I love, but I don't think he's going to get a lot of minutes with Baines now on the bench and with the Celtics moving more towards small ball. He is a high energy big and he was great in that role last season, but I don't think he's going to get all the minutes that he deserves. Ojale, although sixth off the bench, I think he still is going to find a way to get in games. Stevens absolutely loved Ojale last season. He's an outstanding defender, and he's an improving shooter. And with all of the playmakers that the Celtics have, he's going to be a perfect fit next to them. And especially if Marcus Morris is traded, Ojale is going to pick up a lot of those minutes that Morris leaves behind. So then after Ojale, we get to the bench warmers. Yabusele, although a fan favorite, he is probably not going to play a lot this season. I am very excited to see him in garbage time, though. Wanamaker, not going to lie, I don't think I've ever seen this guy play. The rookie, Robert Williams, he's also going to be buried on the bench this season with Baines and Tice ahead of them. Baines and Tice are both on one-year deals, though. So if Williams shows some flashes, the Celtics will definitely let one of them go next season, and Williams will step into a bigger role. And then last is Jabari Berg, which, like I said, I have no idea what the hell is going on with him. He's going to be in jail, I assume, so I don't think he'll be on the team. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.